Good evening, everyone. This is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Fayetteville, Arkansas, with another Fishers and Men video broadcast. And it is good to be here today. And um, it's been a while since I did one of these. Actually, it hasn't really, because I just did a devotional the other night. But as per this particular broadcast, it's been a couple weeks. Um, <clears throat> it is good to be back. Um, want to appreciate your prayers uh through my time off and now uh starting tonight we'll be getting right back into it again every week um typically it's usually fridays and sundays around eight o'clock p.m so remember fridays and set uh, no fridays and sundays at eight o'clock p.m is when we will be doing these broadcasts so you pray for me on that um, tonight we're going to be taking a look at Romans chapter 2 and um, we're going to try to get through the whole chapter. It's not a very lengthy one. It's only 29 verses. So we'll get through it tonight. But, uh, well, we picked, we, last time we, we went through Romans 1 and, um, we'll probably, what I'll probably will do is just to refresh everyone's memory, we'll probably start in Romans 1 and then we'll get into Romans chapter 2. So there'll be a little bit of a, a little bit of a refresher for you guys. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight is Romans chapter 2 and going through that chapter. Um, but uh, let's see, any announcements? Uh, I don't think there is no announcements, although it is the new year. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, and um, I think this will, the the times will, prob will probably, um, I will be doing videos um, for a while. I mean, I mean, I will always continue doing my videos, but there isn't really any vacations or anything coming up. So, um, no breaks. So, We'll just be continue to go through Fridays and Sundays. And um, let's see. I think that's going to be about it. And uh, <clears throat> prayer requests. Um, biggest prayer request I would say for me is keep me in prayer. I haven't been doing very well the last few days. Just even just even kind of throughout the, you know, first eight days of the year. It's just been kind of rough for me. So pray for me on that. Um, it was rough today. Still is really rough. Didn't really feel like doing a whole lot. Didn't really feel like doing a video, but I'm going to do one anyways. And um, just really wasn't, just have, just, I've just sort of just, had a rough couple days so pray for me on that as well and uh pray for my videos pray for my ministry pray for our nation um our nation is as a lot of christians may not want to recognize or refuse to see is that our nation is going to be coming under judgment here and um that is not a light thing um, and of course, judgment begins with the house of God first. Um, but judgment's coming upon this nation. And, um, whether people want to hear that or not, judgment's coming on this nation. And it's going to be, uh, not a very <clears throat> pleasant time for the, for the nation as a whole. And, but to take heart, God will keep. God's going to keep his kids. He's going to keep his people. He'll preserve them, provide for them and all that. God is, you know, God's always going to be with his people. Um, but this nation has forsook, um, this nation has forsook God and, and his ways. And so now judgment's about to be poured out. So it's a very, very, I think this, you know, Honestly, um, I don't want to get too much into this, but <clears throat> I think instead of bickering and jumping on people because, 
you know, you know, instead of jumping on people because there are some, you know, there are some Christians that just know that Trump is not going to stay in. So, you know, I think instead of jumping on though, you know, jumping on them and giving them a hard time, I really think that for every every born again Christian, you know, should take the time and really sober up. This is a sobering time in our nation right now. I think this this is really a time to sober up and and to think about what the reality of God's judgment is upon this nation. And uh, we really need to take that seriously. But rest assured, I'm going to still be doing my videos. <clears throat> even throughout this time. This, uh, you know, basically from here on out. From till the day I die. You know. Um, I'm still going to be preaching, still going to be doing videos, still going to be doing what God has called me to do, even though sometimes I just don't feel like doing that just because of unworthy, being unworthy and, and, and just a whole bunch of other things, but I'm still going to continue on doing what I'm doing, um, still going to continue on preaching, and honestly, these videos are these videos are just the beginning of something bigger to come for me I think in my ministry so I got to be obedient to this and be faithful in this so I just want to just I want to I just want to encourage every single Christian out there that watches this don't be jumping on other Christians because they think that you know just because they believe that Trump is going to leave office Obviously, he's going to leave office. The election is done. It's over with. Let's move on with our lives. Let's focus on what we need to do for Christ. Let's not be jumping at a, let's not be jumping at let's not be jumping at each other's throats because half half of the Christians over here say that he's going to stay in, and half of them over there, you know, believe that he's going to leave. You know, and it's it's over. Biden is going to be president. Whether you like it or not, we need to move forward. I know a lot of people are, are a lot of people are unhappy with what the results were because of of the of of you know the election, um, the stealing of the elections. So you know I can understand that, but right now we need to move forward and we need to focus on Christ and focusing on serving God and not getting at each other's throats. So I want to encourage you uh, to just set your set your differences aside and focus on the very thing that we have in common, which is Jesus Christ and His Word. Amen. So you know, let's let's not be little petulant children about this. Let's grow up. Let's put our let's let's. Let's put on our big boy pants and let's just, let's be mature about this. Let's not be, um, don't be, uh, don't be like little tiny petulant children jumping at each other's throats. Um, cause it's not going to solve anything. Okay. It's just not. And so, <clears throat> and I'm not trying to be mean, but we need to move forward from this and we need to focus. We've got bigger things to focus on and that's soul winning. And there are much more Gentiles that need to be saved. And if we sit here all day and bicker, that job's not going to get done. And I'm going to tell you something. If that job's not going to get done, God is going to deal with the church more harshly than he already is. So let's do what we need to do. Let's focus on Christ. Let's focus on the Great Commission. Let's not bicker. Let's not fight. Let's be mature adults. And let's do what we got to do. Amen. So I just want just to put that out there. Um, so pray for our nation, uh, pray for me, pray for our broadcasts. Um, if you have any, if you have any prayer requests, um, if you'd like to mention them in the comments, either in uh, YouTube or Facebook, please feel free to put them on there if you like, or just message me and let me know. Um, I gotta, I gotta update my prayer list and I haven't done that yet. And I apologize. My mind has just been going a hundred miles an hour and, it's, and I've been forgetful and stuff like that. And I really 
got to do a better job at jotting down prayer requests. Amen. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I think with that said, if no one has any prayer requests, uh, we'll go ahead and get started because I want to get through this chapter tonight. And, uh, you know, as soon as we're done with the chapter, we'll, we'll, we'll be done, okay? But so now for those of you that, that uh, for those of you that may just be tuning in and may just be listening to uh, just this particular one and didn't uh, listen to the first chapter, um, we're going to go ahead and do like a reading review of it and then we'll go ahead and get into chapter two. So if we can, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, with me to the book of Romans. Uh, the book of Romans, and we're going to start in chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse, we're going to start in verse 20, 28, verse 28, okay, <clears throat> it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, Implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. <clears throat> now, we see this right now in the passages I just read. Before we get into chapter 2, I want to comment on something here. We see here... And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, but you know, knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Let's put that in practical context. Let's. How does that apply today? Well, <clears throat> we see that our nation is filled with unrighteousness. There's fornication. There's wickedness. There's covetousness. There's maliciousness. There's envy. There's murder, you know, there's murder, you know, abortion. Um, there's debate. You know what? And you know, you know what? We're seeing a lot of that right now, especially in Christian circles. We're seeing a lot of debating going on with politics. And like I said, you know, let's not do that. Let's be mature adults and let's, let's not debate on these things and let's focus on the word of God. Amen. But we're seeing there's a lot of debate, you know, not just in not just in Christianity, but there's a lot of debate <clears throat> elsewhere, unnecessary debate. Okay? Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers. We see all these things here in our politics. We see all we see a lot of these things in um, in our nation today, and we see and we're starting to see that judgment's going to start being poured out on this nation. Okay, now you take a look at our politicians. They do not like to retain God in their knowledge. You know, it was, uh, what was it? I think it was the 6th. Well, I don't know, the 5th or 6th. I can't remember. But when the House of Representatives opened up with prayer, you notice that it, they closed it with amen and all woman. Well, that in itself is kind of weird, okay? I'll, I'll admit that. That's really weird. But, if you actually take a look at what the prayer is, <clears throat> they were basically praying to the Antichrist. They were praying to a false Hindu god, little g. Okay? 
a false Hindu god. And so they didn't they didn't retain God in their knowledge. And it's funny because, you know, it seems like there are some things they were saying through prayer. It made it almost seem like they were praying to God, but they didn't. They were praying to a false God. And so what this, what God is going to do to this nation is God is giving this nation over to a reprobate mind. He's giving this nation over to cruel authority because we did not, as a nation, we did not retain God in our knowledge. Okay, and so now we're going to be going through the consequences of that. <clears throat> and uh, we, we, we see and we go through all the, 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 the sins listed there. And we, and we see at the end that who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay, so it's not just it's not just doing those acts. But it's, it can be simply as either promoting it or watching it or advertising for it. You know, you got to be careful what you do because you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're advertising sin. And that's something we all need to work on. Amen. Now, with that said, we'll go on to, to Romans chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 1. Romans 2. It says, therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art th that judgest, for where in thou judgest another, thou con condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Now, I think what, now, and I could be wrong, but which commits such things, I think, is referencing the list of sins that was listed back in in uh, Romans chapter 1. Okay? Now, let's go back up to verse 1 here, okay? Um, judge not. Okay. <coughs> it says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art the judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest, doest the same things. Okay, now let me tell you something. <clears throat> Some people will say, well, you're not supposed to judge because, you know, lest if you judge, then you'll be judged the same way. Well, first of all, they took that verse out of context. Okay. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, Jesus says, Judge not that ye be not judged. Now, a lot of secular people will like to say, Well, see, you're not supposed to judge. But what that's talking about is judging out of hypocrisies. Okay? It, and this is what verse 1 of Romans is talking about. Okay? So, with that said, if you have like a marker or, some, or somewhere, I want you to place your marker in Romans chapter 2. We'll come back to that. And I want us to go and take a look at Matthew chapter 7. Okay, let's get the full context of that particular verse. Matthew chapter 7. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Matthew 7, verse, starting in verse 1. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Okay, that's talking about hypocrisy, judging out of hypocrisy. Okay, now you might say, well, Brandon, why do you say that? Well, let's continue reading. Jesus immediately after that says, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote of Mo out of thine own eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat of the out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your eat your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Okay, 
Jesus says, judge not by mere appearance, but judge righteous judgment. What does that mean? Means judging righteous judgment is judging according to the word of God. Can I get an amen from God's people on that? Judging righteous judgment is judging according to the word of God. You know why? Because when Jesus said, judge righteous judgment, let me ask you a question. Are you righteous? The answer is no. Without Christ, you can do nothing. Okay? Without Christ, you can do nothing. <clears throat> God says, your righteousness are as filthy rags to God. So therefore, you are not righteous. So when you judge righteous judgment, you are judging by what the word of God says. And that's how we're supposed to judge. <clears throat> but the world will like to say, well, don't judge me. Okay? If you don't want me to judge you, fine. But you will be judged by a holy and righteous God. Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh <clears throat> and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. He is the word. Okay? So let's not <clears throat> let's not um let's not think to ourselves that let's not um assume that we shouldn't judge. We're actually we are actually to judge according to the word and we're to judge by the word. Amen. It's by the word of God we need to judge. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, if somebody is, if somebody's sleeping around, you call it what the Bible calls it. Fornication, adultery. If somebody is drinking and they're drunk, okay, they are what? They are a drunkard. You call sin as it is. That's how you judge righteous judgment. That's part of it anyways. Some people tend to believe that you shouldn't call sin out as it is because they're, you're labeling them. Well, if people have an issue with that, then they have an issue with God because God does call out sin as it is. Amen. God calls sin as it is. <coughs> Sorry. Let's go on. Um, actually, let's continue on. Um, and uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 37 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. John chapter 7, verse 24, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment, folks. That is what I'm saying. Judge righteous judgment. You judge by the word of God. Amen. Now, <clears throat> that's only verse 1, so let's continue on. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth. Think about that. Okay, what do we just say about judging righteous judgment? It says, the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which commit such things. Okay, so that means that God's judgment is true because he's going to measure, he's going to judge you according to his standard. And his standard is this Bible, your King James Bible. 66 books. This is how he'll judge you. And he's going to do it for every person. Um, or despitest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Do you want to know something? Um, 
The goodness of God leadeth to repentance. Okay. Do you remember when when Jesus first came to Peter? Right? He first came to Peter. And uh let's see here. I I gotta i I'm gonna find that verse because I don't want to screw it up. But you remember when he first came to Peter? <clears throat> Because Peter didn't catch anything. He was a fisherman. He didn't catch anything. And all of a sudden, he, he was catching all this fish. Okay? So in, in um, Luke chapter 5, verse 8, it says, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You know why? Because let's, 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 you know why Peter said that? Let's go up to verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should not come and help them. And when they actually, you know, what? let's let's go back up to verse six. I'm sorry. Let's go to verse six. <clears throat> it says, and actually, no, let's go up to verse five. And Simon, actually, no, I'm sorry. We're gonna go back up even further. Um. Let's start in verse 3. It says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. He sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let your let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, that they should come and help them, and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. See, they didn't get Simon Peter was fishing all night and didn't catch anything. And Jesus said, let down your nets. And when they did, a whole bunch of fish came up. And you want to know something? When, they, when, he, when he called all that fish, he went to Jesus and said, depart from me, I am a sinful man. Okay, think about that. It is the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Jesus gave goodness to Peter by catching a whole bunch of fish. And Peter repented and acknowledged that he was a sinful man. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Amen? <clears throat> now, I'm sorry I rambled on and on and on. I hope, I, hope, I hope what I said made sense and wasn't too rambling. But please, uh, bear with me in my folly a little bit. Um, but after thy hardness and impotent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds? You know, let's stop right there for a second. Um, Let's type in reward. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Amen. The Lord has rewards according to every man's work. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, immortality eternal life. <clears throat> but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. You want to know something? 
Why did God say that? Why did God say to the Jew first and also the Gentile? Because God is no respect of person. So whatever he does to the Jew, he'll have to do to the Gentile. There's no exception. Amen. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of every soul a man that doeth evil. Think about all the wickedness in our nation today. Think about why in the season that we're about to enter in right now. We're going to be entering in through a time of judgment in this nation. Okay? And it's because, you know, there's a lot of wickedness and evil going on with our politicians and with everything going on in this nation. And God's saying enough is enough. And he's going to have to judge this nation. Whether we like it or not. But God will preserve his people. Can I get an amen on that? God will preserve his people. And God, if God preserved his word, he'll preserve his people. <clears throat> and think about this. If you are a child of God today... If you sinned, you're going to receive chastening. But, we, we, but our judgment as a believer is chastening of the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. Now, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Again, we see that God is not a respect of persons, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good. You know how you work good? You work good by being born again. Because when you are born again, it is Christ doing the work through you. It's not you doing the work. It's Christ through you. God says... Your righteousness are as filthy rags. So the only way that you can ever do good is to be born again, to be a child of the God, the child of God, the child of the King and the Most High, to be to be born again, which means to put your faith and trust in what Christ did for you at the cross and believing on him. And when you are born again, Christ works through you, and therefore, when, you, when, when it appears that you are doing good works, it's not you, but it's Christ through you. Amen? So to them that worketh good, that's those who are born again. Okay? To the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. So that shows you that God has no respect of persons. That whatever he does to his people, he's going to also do for the Gentiles. Check this out. Verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. What does that mean? That means that if God does something for me, he can do it for you. There's no favoritism with God. God loves his kids equally and the same. There is no favoritism. He does not favor me over you. He does not favor you over me. He loves just as much as he loves me. He loves you. He loves all his kids equally. Jew and Gentile. There is no respect of persons with God. <clears throat> For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now that that might sound contradictory because he might say, well, we're not, we're saved under grace. We're not saved under the law. You're right, we're not saved under the law. And there shall be, and by the law there shall be no there shall be no flesh justified. Amen. 
There's only one who kept the law. That was Christ. If Christ lives within you, you are justified. Not because of what you did. It's because of what Christ did. Because Christ is the only one who fulfilled the law 100% perfect. You cannot. Jesus Christ is the only one who has fulfilled the law perfectly. And if he resides within you, amen, it's his perfection that flows through you. We don't have perfection. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, or a law unto themselves, <clears throat> which, shew, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the, the thoughts, the mean, while, uh, while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. What have I been saying? God is going to judge out of what's written in his word. And it's going to be the same across everybody, whether you believe or not. And we just read it. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ... <clears throat> according to my gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Now, I want to make a comment on something. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. If you're born again today and you're saved, God wrote his law in your heart. And if you don't believe me, let me prove it to you by a couple questions. Question one, is it wrong to steal? Yes or no? If you answered yes, then you know that it's wrong to steal. Okay, that's what com that's what commandment is that? That is, thou shalt not steal. Okay, is it wrong to lie? Yes or no? If you answered yes, that's the commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Does that make sense now? If you know that if you know that lying, cheating, and stealing is wrong then you know those are uh, those are a couple of the commandments that God said thou should not do. But remember, we are not under the law. The law is our schoolmaster pointing us to Christ. The law was to show us that we are in need of a Savior. That's why the law was given. Because Israel was bragging about how they can keep the law. So God gave them the law. And God said, the Old Testament covenant was, if you keep the law, you'll be blessed. If you don't keep it, you'll be cursed. But you want to know something? In the New Testament, we're saved by grace through faith. Not of ourselves, lest any man should boast, for it is the gift of God. <clears throat> so we're not under the Old Covenant. We are under the New Covenant. Amen. Now, does that mean you should go off and sin and do whatever? No. That doesn't mean that, that does not mean at all. We're not to go, we're not to use our liberty for the occasion of the flesh. We're supposed to use that liberty to serve God and serve others. I, I want you to think about something here. I want you to think about the word joy for a second. I've heard it said this as an acronym. Okay, J is Jesus, O is others, and Y is yourself. Joy, that is the order in which 
you should go in. Know the why is last. Yourself is last. First is Jesus. That's the J. O is others. That's next. And then you're last. That's how it should be. Amen? Should not be the other way around. Jesus come first, then others, and then yourself. <clears throat> um, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonor, dishonorest thou God? Dis, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Now really quickly... Uh, before we wrap up chapter 2, because we're actually almost done. Okay, we're almost done. I want us to turn to James, I think it's James chapter 2. Turn with me to James chapter 2. Okay, James chapter 2. Uh, let's see, that's Hebrews. James. Okay, let's start, let's see, James chapter 2, let's start in verse 9. It says, But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Okay, <clears throat> now you might say, well, Brandon, why did you mention that? Well, first of all, we see here that when thou that, thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Okay, so when you've got someone who says don't commit adultery, and yet they do commit adultery, we see that's hypocrisy. We see that's hypocrisy. And we also kind of see, too, that can come off as legalistic. And if I tell you, you can't drink, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. And yet, if I tell you that and do all that stuff, that makes me look like a hypocrite, doesn't it? Okay? But yet, if you say, but if you don't commit adultery... But you say you can't drink or you can't kill and yet you drink or you get angry for no reason. You're a transgressor of the law. Because James says if you keep one, if you keep all of them but offend in one point, you're guilty of them all. Amen? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the, right, the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision 
does transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. You see, when we become born again, our hearts are circumcised. Christ makes all things new. When we come to Christ and when we get saved, our hearts get circumcised. God writes his law on our hearts. We know right from wrong. We know by nature who God is so that we may be without excuse. Amen. And we know that we're not circumcised of the law, but the law points us to Christ because the law is our schoolmaster showing us that we are in need of Christ. And when we come to Christ, and when we get born again, we become a new creature. All things are passed away. New things are to become new. You know, new things are new. Old, the old is passed away. Our hearts are circumcised. His law is written on our heart. And we become... A new man with a new nature. And when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, when we are born again, God will chasten us and chastise us and correct us when we have done wrong, that we might be that we may repent, that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. <clears throat> um Believe it or not, that is chapter 2. So that was kind of a quick chapter. So that's going to be it for tonight. Um, we're, chapter 2 is a very short chapter. Uh, next Friday we'll get into chapter 3. We'll talk about how God is faithful and just. And he is faithful and just, amen. And that's going to be even a shorter chapter. So, you know, we'll kind of go and kind of take it as where the Lord leads us. Um, <clears throat> you guys, I hope this made sense to you tonight. I hope this can be a blessing to you. If only one person gets this, then it will all be worth it. If only one gets it and understands it and can apply it and their life is changed as a result of it, it's worth it. Amen. <clears throat> um... Listen, guys, um, I know I said this at the beginning, and I'm going to say it again, because it needs to be said. Um, right now, we're entering in a time where God's going to start judging this nation. Okay? We're seeing a split right now in the body of Christ. There are Christians that say that Trump is going to stay in and there's others that are saying nope Trump is leaving okay and I'm just gonna say this okay with everything that I saw and heard from Trump's own mouth he conceded he's gonna leave Biden's gonna come in okay whether anyone likes it or not I want to say this as well I don't know what your all stances are on this. But right now is not the time to be jumping on each other, hitting each other over in the head with this Trump issue. We have much bigger things to worry about. Let me ask you a question. How would you feel if you stood before God today and you found out that you wasted time because you were so worried about arguing about whether Trump was going to stay in or leave. 
when you should have been worrying about souls. Okay? So, I want to encourage you guys. I'm not trying to be mean. We need to put our differences aside. We need to stick to the Word of God. We need to focus on the Word of God. We need to serve Christ. And we need to focus on what He wants us to do. Because, quite frankly, the time is too short to be worrying about whether Trump is going to stay in or not. It's the most ridiculous thing to be hitting each other over the head. It really is. We need to put our differences aside. We need to come and be unified as the body of Christ. And we need to focus on what we need, what needs to be done. Amen. I'm not trying to be mean. Okay. But we need to focus. We need to reprioritize our thinking a little bit. You know what, brother? Brother Johnny, I agree with you. Yes. Amen. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, not Trump or politics. I think a lot of Christians are really fed up with politics. I am one of them. Just going to be honest with you. Right now, let's focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. For all those who are not watching this, if you're not saved, you can know for sure that today, that if you were to die, you can go to heaven. Okay? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are a whosoever, which you are, if you call upon Jesus Christ and you cry out to him, ask him to forgive you, ask him to save you, ask him to come into your heart, he will do so. He's not going to turn anyone away. If you, if you truly cry out to God and ask him to save you, he will. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And listen, for all you guys who are born again, <clears throat> born again, spirit filled and signed and sealed by the Holy Ghost. Can I assure you that yes, trouble is coming, but God is going to preserve his people. He's going to keep his people. He's going to preserve his people and he's going to take care of his people. Amen. But at the same time, we may have to get, we may go through a little bit of a rough patch just because of everything going on. But take heart. God is with you. Amen. God is with you. And Jesus loves you. He does. He paid that price in full on Calvary so that ye may have eternal life. Amen. Anyways, anyway, guys, um, I love you. Not trying to be mean, but we just got to reshift our priorities a little bit. We all, we all do. I need to. We all need to. Um, I love you guys. I'm not trying to be mean. And I hope that, I hope, I, I hope that you guys get that sense from me that I'm not being mean. I'm just trying to tell it as it is. Amen. We're supposed to speak the truth in love. And I hope tonight was a blessing. I know it was a short chapter, but I hope that whatever I said was a blessing for you guys. Um, also, if you guys if you guys are led to share this with with other individuals, by all means, you know, do it. Um, you know, share it with people. You know, and you know, get the word of God out there. Um, and uh, you know, let's let's um, let's serve and worship the lord together amen so but anyways i love you guys this is brother brandon i'm signing off for the evening god bless you guys i love you and we'll see you we'll see you we'll see you sunday all right love you guys see ya bye